Hi! Okay, so this is now our second video lecture. Video lecture number two. 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 Okay? So, uh, I have already uploaded your modules. So I've uploaded modules two and three at the same time. Sorry, uh, this actually took quite long before I got to upload it. Before I actually even recorded it. One is because I waited for a microphone to come. Uh, yeah. You can hear my audio perfectly now, even without the, without the aid of your headphones. Thank you, guys, sir. Segundo sa pagtulong sa akin paano i set up ito. Of course, shout out din kay Mom Segaya. Binigyan niya ako ng form ikaw, di ba? But this time, I won't be able to bring this closer, so you can, so you would have to, um, siguro kayo na lang mag-zoom in, pause the video, zoom in if there are, uh, there are writings that you could not read or you could hit me up in the comments or in our Google Classroom or even in Messenger for any questions. So this is the second video lecture. Our exams are coming real soon. I'm hoping now we could actually finish lateral earth pressure by this week. So that will be the coverage of your exam this weekend. Uh, we'll try to do what we could. Anyways, um, I am easily contact now and you can reach me through my Facebook. I believe I have given my phone number in the module. If not, you could ask for it. Uh, I would like to try and schedule now Zoom meetings. I uh, Zoom Zoom meetings to like uh, Google Meet meetings. I will be meeting there. Hopefully, I will be entertaining your questions and the like. But then again, I will be recording that Google Meet, of course, for those that won't be able to join us. So anyways, let's go over our topic for this time. We will now be considering the two other cases now when considering our lateral earth pressure. We were just, we have finished with uh, lateral earth pressure at, le at rest. For now, let's consider the other two cases, which is now active and passive earth pressure. Uh, these theories now have been um, hypothesized or have been studied by a geotechnical engineer, Rankine. Uh, I have given you the module. Please read on it. Uh, the main difference now that we will be looking at when considering when considering active and passive pressure, sa at rest conditions, hindi nag-yield yung ating retaining wall. It is in its balanced state, it is in a state of static equilibrium. It is not moving anywhere. Whereas, if we were now to consider the active and passive cases, which is actually what usually occurs during um, the re during I when we erect now a retaining wall, we have our retaining wall right here. Let's say this is our retaining wall. And this is now my soil profile being carried what happens when there now occurs a failure plane let's say somewhere here there's a failure plane more or less our soil layer here will be pushed down okay uh, the soil layer will go down here this soil layer will be pushing down of course the retained so uh, the retained soil structure will be uh, will be moving against that so it will be moving upwards what would happen is our wall now this is uh in active case our wall here this triangular failure plane will most likely be the only thing that will be pushing towards our wall our wall now will be slowly yielding away from the soil body until it reaches a state of plastic equilibrium Okay, it will be reaching now a state of plastic equilibrium. It will be yielding away from the soil mass up to this point. What is plastic equilibrium, you may ask? It is now a state where the soil is on the verge of failure. Okay, so not necessarily naman class na if our conditions tend to go to the active state, it doesn't necessarily mean na nag-fail na yung wall structure mo kasi nag-move siya towards that. No, that's not necessarily the case. Actually, sometimes the active pressure is a active condition is preferred. Why? If we know if we were having our active pressure, consider this, etong triangular soil area lang na to ang bubuhatin ng wall. 
as compared now to this whole soil body. Di ba? Itong triangular failure plane lang. Yan na lang yung i-carry ng wall natin. That is now our active case. What now in the term of our passive case? Sabi natin we have again our wall here. Again, normally, in the passive case class, it does not occur naturally. What does that mean? Imposible namang magbe-bend lang itong wall natin. Imposible yung trip niya lang na mag-bend papunta dun sa soil layer. Okay, there is now a level of resistance from the soil to prevent this from happening. So how does this happen? This happens like I said, if it is induced by external forces. Let's say you were to put now bracings to push our uh, retaining wall towards the soil. Or let's say an earthquake occurred, tapos kinaila, uh, the force was great or powerful enough to push the wall towards our soil. Pwede rin nasa ginang bako, gaya ng sabi ko. Or pwede rin, ano pa kaya yung pwedeng case? Paano kapag meron ding wall dito tapos bumagsak siya dun, tapos mas heavy yung wall natin dito, could that be a case? Yes, that is a uh, possible occurrence. What would happen now if this was in the passive case, meron pa rin tayong failure wedge dito. But this is now being pushed towards the entirety of the soil body. Siyempre, magkakaroon tayo ng heaving on this part. What would happen there, <coughs> this failure wedge will now be pushed upwards as compared now to the, to the rest of the soil, resisting it, pushing downwards. That is now the main difference between the two. Now, what would happen kapag dito sa passive case natin, we have now this much soil, all of the soil here, being compacted tightly together, and all of that now, pushing towards the soil or the soil is pushing towards that meaning there is pressure that is actually very big because the soil here is compacted and it is being pushed against this wall so meaning ano yung pinagsasabi mo sir what i want to point out here is a uh, a very common knowledge when we are referring to active pressure and passive pressure Active pressure is always less than passive pressure. That is the case. Mas maliit yung active pressure kaysa sa passive pressure. That is just the mainly a big difference between the two. Okay? Also, I would like to propose a question. Is it possible to actually have active and the passive conditions occurring at the same time within a single wall? Sipin nyo nga, posible kaya na magsabay ang active and passive conditions in on a single wall? Would that be possible? Answer is of course, yes. What if I had a big retaining wall right here? It is now retaining soil on this side and it is also retaining soil on this side. If this was the case, what would happen class? Sabi natin parehas yung soil profile, meaning gamma here is equal to gamma here, phi here is equal to phi here, cohesion is equal to cohesion. What if parehas na parehas lang? What do you think would be the behavior of our wall this time? Well, of course, since this is of a bigger volume as compared to this, it will be pushing the wall uh, with a greater lateral earth pressure. What does that mean? Our wall will be shifting or it will be yielding towards the left. Now, if that were to happen, let's say this is my wall. If that were now to happen, class, what is the state of the soil? More or less, if that were to happen, obviously, this side would be under the active for in the active conditions, and this side would be under the passive condition. That would be the main difference there, di ba? Our wall be, will be yielding towards the left side and it will be yielding away from the right side. So that is that. That is now active and passive pressure. So what is the main difference now? Oops. What will be the main difference now when we consider solving for problems under active and the passive conditions? More or less, the procedure or the process of solving this is the same as it's when we were solving for at-rest conditions. 
Ano lang yung main difference? For the active case, the main difference would be your lateral earth coefficient. If you could recall from the previous video lecture, the lateral earth coefficient of soil or soil at rest was what? 1 minus sign of the angle of friction. But this time, when we are considering the active conditions, let's denote this as case of A. Or referring now to active earth coefficient. This time, when it is active, our formula for this would now be equal to tangent squared of <coughs> tangent squared of 45 now minus angle of friction divided by 2. And as for our passive, passive conditions now or when solving for the lateral earth coefficient, this time we make use of case of P. Or this is now what we would call the passive earth coefficient. This is now equal to tangent squared, tangent squared of 45. This time plus sigma, I plus ang angle of friction all over 2. That is the main difference for active earth pressure. We consider subtracting the effects of the soil friction or the angle of friction. And as for passive, we add now the effects of the angle of, uh, angle of friction. That is just the main difference. <clears throat> okay? So as you can see from the formula itself, obviously, which would yield a higher value? Higher value would be passive. Diba? Mas mataas yung value since we are adding in a higher value and we take the tangent of that. Mas malaki yung value ng passive. So dyan pa lang, if we were to multiply that with our effective uh, vertical stress, of course, this would yield a bigger value for lateral earth pressure. So sir, is that just the main, is that the main difference now when considering for active and passive conditions? This is the major difference. Another difference would be in solving for the lateral earth pressure itself. If you would recall for at rest conditions, we considered now sigma prime h. Tama? But since we are considering active, let's denote this as sigma prime a. So it would mean that it is of the active condition automatically. More or less, it's the same it is the same uh, equation. This is simply your active earth coefficient multiplied by the effective vertical stress or that is of course gamma multiplied by H. Diba? That is simply sigma prime vertical. This is now the equation for lateral earth pressure for at rest condition. Ano lang ang madadagdag or mapapalitan when we are considering active conditions? We simply subtract now a value known as 2c square root of case of a. What is this value? That is simply twice the cohesion of the soil multiplied by the square root of the active earth coefficient. Because plus we have our <coughs> we have our wall at an angle already. Since it is at an angle, meron ng angle of contact or um friction angle na tumatama yung soil natin dun sa wall. With regards to that, there will now be an effect of cohesion. Remember, cohesion is a strength parameter of soil. You have learned about this from geotechnical engineering too. This would be the main difference. Yan lang yung madadagdag sa formula natin. Sir, what about sa passive? Sa passive naman, we have sigma primes of P to denote it as passive earth coefficient, ay passive earth pressure. This is simply equal to the same thing. Passive earth coefficient case of P multiplied by gamma H. This time, we add now the effects of cohesion and that would be plus 2C square root now of case of P. Okay? That is the main difference when we are considering active and passive conditions. Let's see how will this affect my pressure diagrams. Why do I need to consider the effect on the pressure diagrams? I need to draw my pressure diagrams in order to solve for what? To solve for the lateral earth force or the lat I active earth force or passive earth force. Diba? Bakit 
kailangan. Sir, because yung area ng pressure diagram natin would be equal to the force itself. Okay? So, if we consider now an active case, what is the main difference or main change to our pressure diagram? Okay? Remember, sigma prime of A is equal now to case of A, gamma H, minus 2C square root of case of A. This is our general working equation for this. If I were to draw now a pressure diagram, Again, with respect to lateral earth, ay, lateral earth pressure as our x-axis and the depth of the soil as our y-axis, if we were to consider a point zero or the first at the very top point, what is the value of case of A gamma H? At this point, H is equal to zero. So at this point, cancel dyan, magiging zero. I will have a negative value because I will subtract uh, from zero, the effects of cohesion. So remember, we were drawing our pressure diagrams going to the right. This time, since it is negative, it is now acting on tension. It will be moving to the left. And this now will have a value of negative 2C square root of case of A. Now, if I were to consider the... Okay, so where were we? Uh, my phone fell. I'm using my phone as a webcam kasi nalaglag. Intermission lang. Okay, so where were we? We were drawing the pressure diagram now of an active case. Since we don't have... Since we don't have any effective pressure at the topmost part or at the ground surface, the only effect we'll be getting there is the subtracted value of cohesion. Okay? So that is that. If we were now to go to the furthest part or to the base of our retaining wall, the value of the lateral earth pressure at this side would now be equal to case of A multiplied by gamma H minus now the effects of cohesion to C square root of case of A. Yan ay magiging value. And if we were to close now, if we were to close our pressure diagram, it would look something like this. Okay? As you can see, it is very different now from what we have been solving in at, in at rest state or in that at rest condition. If you would notice here where our pressure diagram crosses now the value of zero, this point here is actually very crucial. Why is that crucial? This bottom part here is under compression. On top, it is under tension. What do you think is the force now being introduced to our wall? It is going to look something like this. Yan. Para siyang nag-bend na ganun. Tama? It is more or less bending this way. There is now a huge stress being induced here. Or the moment, we, if we were to take the moment there, it would be great. It would be too huge to consider. This point here is actually what we call the depth of tensile crack. Okay? This will be now be this will be the location of tensile crack. If you would notice, meron tayong if you've been going around Baguio, have you seen now retaining walls na makikita nyo yung may crack doon? Or kung wala man yung crack, makikita nyo may CHB na yung nasa topmost layer. That is actually now a way, uh, maybe a way now to save cost because what would happen there, here at the depth of tensile crack, geotechnical engineers actually avoid this. So how do we avoid this case? From this point on, everything above it is now due to the forces of cohesion. So nung ginagawa ng mga geotechnical engineers natin dyan, at this point, going upwards, pinapalitan natin actually yung soil composition. So the soil here is being is being replaced by granular soil. Or what do we mean by granular soil? Granular soil now pertains to soil that has no cohesion whatsoever. So what, sir, what are granular soils? What can be considered as granular soil? If you consider sand, sand is actually cohesionless soil. So if we were to actually replace the 
soil profile here with cohesionless cohesionless soil what would happen if this was cohesionless soil wala tayong effects ngayon ng cohesion on this side mawawala to di ba so a what do geotechnical engineers do now in this case since it is cohesionless soil and since it will not be producing any pressure whatsoever on the wall, pwede na nilang palitan ng, ng non-load bearing CHB. Pinapalitan na nila. So if you go around bago, there are actually retaining walls that have CHB on top. That The CHB would actually start from the um, tensile zone or the tensile crack zone onwards, upwards pinapalitan niya na yung retaining wall natin because it is not carrying any load whatsoever because it is now carrying cohesionless soil. Okay? So, what would happen now, sir, kapag passive naman yung ating wall? Anong itsura ng pressure diagram natin this time? Passive case, di ba, we only add na that is the main difference. Pa, ia-add lang natin yung effects ng cohesion. So, now for the passive, what does the pressure diagram look like? Again, we draw our pressure diagram. At the topmost part, H is equal to 0. So, the effective stress is equal to 0. Ang magiging pressure lang natin at this top part would be the effects of cohesion yet again. But this time, it is of positive value because we are adding the effects of cohesion. Up until going down here. Up until here, at this top value, the value would be 2c square root of k of p this time because we are referring to passive. So, the passive uh, passive earth coefficient. And at the bottom, the value would be k of p multiplied by gamma multiplied by h plus now the value of cohesion square root of p. Okay? That is now the pressure diagram or the typical pressure diagram for a passive condition. With that knowledge at hand, let's try now to solve for the problems I have given in your module. Uh, problems. There. Here are our problems. Now for problem number one. Problem number one. Problem number one states we have a six meter high retaining wall. We have a 6 meter high retaining wall carrying a soil that has a unit weight of 17.4 kilonewtons per cubic meter. It also has an angle of friction that is equal to 26 degrees. And it has a cohesion that is equal to 14.36. 14.36 kilonewtons per square meter or that is now of course your kpa so this is our uh, illustration for problem number one we are now being asked for the active determine the rank and active force per unit length both before and after the tensile crack occurs and determine the line of action of the resultant in both cases okay so before and after tensile crack occurs so here is our first problem under the active case. So how do we solve this? Similar to what we've been doing with uh, at rest conditions, the first thing we'll be solving would be the lateral earth pressure. I the lateral earth pressure, lateral earth pressure coefficient. Sorry. So that would now be our case of A. Since it is in active state, case of A is equal to tangent squared of 45 now minus angle of friction divided by 2 okay that means it is tangent squared of 45 minus 26 all over 2 so that value is zero point three hundred ninety. 
We have the value of case of A. Again, if you would recall, dun sa handout nyo, or check your module, we'll also be making use of what value the square root of case of A. And that is now equal to Zero point six two five. Okay, so wala lang sinulub ko lang so for for the ease of our solution later on. So given those values, what is the next step? Since we have those values, now we could actually go ahead and solve for the lateral earth pressure or the active earth pressure at the top point and at the bottom or at the base of the wall. Okay, so let's consider the first part at the zero meter depth. At the zero meter depth now, sigma prime A, or that refers to our active earth pressure, is equal to case of A, 0.390, multiplied by gamma, which is now 17.4, multiplied by a height of what? At the zero meter depth, we multiply it by zero, okay? Okay. And we subtract now, this is different from at rest conditions. This is active, so we have to subtract the effects of cohesion. That is now 2 multiplied by C. What is C? That is 14.36 multiplied by the square root of our active earth coefficient. So that is now 0 0.625. Okay. So our active earth pressure at the 0 meter depth is equal to... Negative 17.95 kPa. Okay? So that's that value for the 0 meter depth. If we are now to consider the value at the 6 meter depth, our sigma prime of A or our active earth pressure is now equal to 0 0.39 multiplied by unit weight 17.4 multiplied by our height or that is the total height this time it would be six meters and subtracting now the effects of cohesion since that is the same as this value here we could say that is minus 17.95 the value at the base of the wall is equal to twenty two point seven six 6 kPa. So I have the values of my earth pressure now. I can go ahead and solve or I mean I can go ahead and draw my pressure diagram. Okay? So my pressure diagram at the 0 meter depth has a value of negative 17.95. So this is now negative 17.95. And at the 6 meter depth, we have a value of 22.766 kPa. Okay? So closing my pressure diagram, this is what my pressure diagram would look like. Hide muna natin yung problems. Okay? So this is what my pressure diagram would look like before tensile crack, of course. Okay? So given this, can I now solve for the... Earth? For the active earth force, yes, I simply take now the, pre, uh, the area of this pressure diagram. But I would need this value here. What is this value here? I would need the height of this triangle here. This height right here is actually the depth of tensile crack. And we should denote it as Z of C. Can I solve for the values of Z of C? Yes. I am given the total height. I have Z of C. By making use of similar triangles, I can go ahead and solve for Z of C. So the depth of tensile crack all over 17.95. This should be equal to the total height 6 minus the depth of tensile crack all over 22.766. Making use of similar triangles, the depth of tensile crack will come out to be equal to Solve 
2.645 okay 2.645 meters underneath the ground surface is where you will find the depth of ten that tensile crack i mean okay so if that is 2.645 the remaining depth here would be equal to 3.355 meters. Okay. I have all the values. Now I can go ahead and solve for my active earth force. That is equal now to piece of A. The subscript A denoting that it is active. How do I do this now? Piece of A is simply the summation of the two areas. In this case, this is negative. So negative... 1 half base times height. What is my base? That is 17.95 multiplied by a height of 2.645 multiplied, eh, sorry, adding now the area below. That is now 1 half of 22.766 multiplied by a height of 3.355 meters. Okay. So this is this, our active earth force before tensile crack happens is 22.76645 minus 22.766 times 2. Fourteen point four five one. Four five one kilonewtons per unit meter of the wall. Okay. So this is now the value before tensile crack. Uh, let's solve for the direction. For the direction of my force. Do we do this? Of course, we make use of Varignon's theorem. Y bar would be equal to the first area. that is now negative 23.739 the centroid of that being one third of the total z of c okay kapag nag nag <coughs> if we were to take moments at the bottom of the wall this is now 6 minus one third of z of c 6 minus 2.645 all over 3 okay Plus <coughs> we are to consider positive, yeah. Plus if we were to take now clockwise as positive, this will be plus, bottom would be minus because it will be in this direction. Okay. And that height here from the footing of the wall is equal to 3.355 divided by 3. So this is 22.766 plus 3.355 divided by 2. It's now 38.1. Point 0.19 and the centroid or the y now distance from the foot of the wall is equal to 3.355 divided by 3 okay y bar is actually of course this whole value is divided by my piece of a 14.451 this is simply Varignon's theorem class no Varignon's theorem divided by 14.451 Divided by 3 
minus uh, 38.19 multiplied by 3.355 divided by 3 divided by 14.451 okay y bar is now equal to 5.453 meters or that is from the bottom going up 4.453 meters if you would see the direction is going to the right because it is now positive the direction is going to the right meaning the location of the active force before tensile crack occurs happens 5.453 meters above the foot of the wall okay so answer that is of course before tensile crack how do we solve this sir after tensile crack occurs okay after tensile crack occurs let's erase this for now ang saya rin no pag online classes tas hindi ka pa nakakapagkopya di ba pag mangyayari sa, sa actual classroom natin if you're not done copying and I'm about to erase the board, sir, take lang, picture, picture kayong ganyan. Online class, after I upload this, you simply pause. No? Basic. Napaka basic. Okay, so let's do that. So what happens now if we were to consider after tensile crack has already occurred? Di ba pagka tensile crack happens, we know geotechnical engineers make a solution para walang force or walang pressure above the tensile crack zone so hindi tayo mag-introduce ng tension sa wall natin by putting what by putting <coughs> um granular soil above the tensile crack zone so meaning after tensile crack occurs wala na tayong kino-consider ngayon na to wala na yang part na yan we no longer consider anything above the tensile crack zone After tensile crack occurs, ito na lang class ang magiging pressure diagram natin. So if that was my pressure diagram, I could simply solve now for the active force. P of A is equal to the area of this triangle here. This is now 1 half multiplied by 3.355 multiplied by the base 22.766. P of A is simply equal to... Thirty-eight point nineteen kilonewtons now per meter length of the wall. Answer. And if I were to take now the location of this force that is simply y bar or centroid of my area diagram that is now one third of the total height three point three five five. This is now equal to. One, one, eight meters above the foot of the wall. Okay? Answer. Basic. No? Okay, so that's our problem number one. Let's go ahead and solve for problem number two. Okay. So let's go now and solve for problem two. So from the figure shown, surcharge is applied. Surcharge of 50 kPa is applied. Determine what? The total lateral pressure at the base of the wall. Determine the total active force acting on the wall and the active moment acting on the wall. Okay? So let's close this first. So here is our figure. Similar to how we've been solving for lateral earth pressure before, first things first, we need to solve for our active earth coefficient. So that is now case of A. But if you would look at the problem here, we actually have two values of uh, phi, or that is now your angle of friction. So, ano yung kukunin natin dyan, sir, na active earth coefficient? To answer your question, we will be taking both, okay? So, we will have two values for case of A. Case of A1 would be equal now to tangent squared of 45 minus phi all over 2 that is now from the first soil layer 25 all over 2 our first active earth coefficient is equal to 0 0.406 okay as for case of a 
2 or the active earth coefficient of the second soil layer we have 31 degrees there that would be tangent squared of 45 minus 31 all over 2 and this value is zero point thirty two okay so now that we have solved for our active earth coefficient we could go ahead immediately and try to solve for the earth pressure by doing so we need to solve for our earth pressure value or the effective uh, the horizontal effective stress per point of interest okay so we have the topmost part at 0 meter, then we have at 3 meters depth, and we have, of course, at the 7 meter total depth. So let's first consider what are the factors that contribute to lateral earth pressure in this uh, problem we have here. First, we have the effects of surcharge, that is now 50 kPa. Next up, we have the effects of the first soil layer. And next, we have the effects of the second soil layer and, of course, the effects of the water that is present. So, let's consider now due to surcharge. Due to Q. Okay? Let's consider the effects. We have 50. So, let's just name this as QH. QH. How do we convert that into a horizontal stress? We simply multiply it by our active earth coefficient given as case of a1 and case of a2 so given that that would now be 50 i sorry at the zero meter depth we have now qh or that is now horizontal surcharge that is equal to 50 multiplied by the active earth coefficient of the first soil layer because we are talking about the zero meter depth and the zero meter depth we are referring to the first soil layer so that is now multiplied by 0 0.406 or that has a value of 20.3 20.3 kPa Next up, let's consider at the 3 meter depth. At the 3 meter depth, do we consider 25 degree? Uh, do we consider case of A1 or case of A2 in the 3 meter depth? Alin kaya? Ano ba yung angle of friction at the 3 meter depth? We are referring to this 3 meter depth here. It is actually the point of transition now from 25 degrees going to 31 degrees. Okay? How does that work? Ano yung gagamitin natin? Well, we will be making use of both of them. Because we will have now to consider directly before or immediately before the 3 meter depth, we make use of our first coefficient 0 0.406. Tama? Before it reaches the second soil layer, we make use of the 25 degrees of angle of friction so meaning it is still the same as our zero meter depth value so this is 20.3 kPa next up what if we were to consider immediately after the 3 meter depth pagkalagpas natin ng linya yan automatically we are now in Soil 2. Diba? Since we are in soil 2, we make use of the angle of friction of soil 2 and we make use of its active earth coefficient. So at this point now, surcharge or horizontal surcharge is equal to our 50 kPa value multiplied by the active earth coefficient at the second soil layer, 0 0.32. <coughs> and this now has a value of 16 okay 16 kPa what about at the bottom part or at the base of the wall what is the value of my horizontal surcharge at 7 meters below the ground surface Q's of H what is my 
soil layer 7 meters below the ground surface we are referring to this second soil layer here so we will be making use of its angle of friction likewise we'll be making use of its active earth coefficient so parehas lang ulit siya 50 times 0 0.32 this is now equal to 16 kPa okay I hope you could read the whiteboard Next up, let's move further. That we are done with the effects of surcharge. Let's consider now the effects of the first soil layer on our active earth pressure. So let's say ju to gamma one. <coughs> ju to gamma one at the zero meter depth. Meron ba tayong cohesion? This is in active case. Do we have cohesion present in the problem? None. We don't have cohesion in the problem, so we will not be making use of cohesion or we will not consider minus 2c square root of k of a. So immediately at the 0 meter depth, my sigma prime a is equal to what? That is now k of a1, 0 0.406, multiplied by gamma 18, multiplied by the height at the 0 meter depth. The height of the soil at that level is equal to 0. Meaning, at the 0 meter depth, sigma prime A is equal to 0 kPa. Okay? So, now if we consider <coughs> at the 3 meter depth, paano pagka 3 meter depth? We are considering the effects of our first soil layer on the soil. Of our soil on the first soil layer, we are considering the effects or the lateral earth pressure at the 3 meter depth. At the 3 meter depth, we simply make use <coughs> of what? We make use of the angle of friction 25 degrees. Okay? Again, this is similar. <coughs> this is similar to my surcharge because class kino consider natin yung bigat ng soil na to, tama? Yung bigat ng soil na to, what is the effective stress from this point? What is the effective stress at this point due to this soil layer here? Itong soil layer na to class, di ba meron pa rin siyang, binubuhat pa rin siya nung soil na nandito sa point na to. At the base of the wall, this point here is still carrying this 3 meter soil layer. Tama? It is, carry, it, this, it is what we are calling the overburden pressure. So because of the concept of, the, because of the concept of the, because of the concept of the overburden pressure, Likewise, we have to consider now before and after the 3 meter depth where of course there is a change in the angle of friction. So because there is a change in the angle of friction, there is now varying values of the active earth coefficient. So if we were to consider immediately before the 3 meter depth, bago yung 3 meter depth class, before the 3 meter depth, we are considering the soil one and we are going to make use of the angle of friction 25 degrees. Okay? So, sigma prime of A this time is equal to case of A1, 0 0.406 multiplied by the unit weight 18 and this is multiplied by the total depth that is now 3 meters. So, sigma prime of A Where's my calc? There's my calc. 0.406 times 18 times 3. This is now equal to 21.924 kPa. Now, immediately after the 3 meter depth, kino consider pa rin natin class ay yung bigat ng gamma 1. We're considering the effects of the first soil layer to the total lateral earth pressure. So, meaning immediately after the 3 meter depth kino consider natin yung effect ng gamma 1 so ang iko consider natin na gamma is still our 18 kilonewtons per cubic meter okay but this time we are immediately after 3 meters we are on the second soil layer kumbaga tinitignan na natin class yung effect ng soil 1 dun sa soil 2 Making use, of course, of the properties of soil 2. So, meaning sigma prime of A immediately after the 3 meter depth, we will be making use of the second 
soil coefficient and that is now 0 0.32 okay and similarly we make use of the 3 meter depth so sigma prime of a immediately after the 3 meter depth is 17.28 kPa okay how about now at the 7 meter depth at the 7 meter depth sigma prime of a is equal to what at the 7 meter depth, obviously, we'll be making use of 0 0.32 or the second soil layer's active earth coefficient. We are at this point here. Ano yung gagamitin kong gamma or unit weight? I will be making use of 18. Bakit 18 yung ginamit nyo, sir? Ang consider pa lang natin ngayon is the effects of gamma 1. Like I said, any point underneath this surface, kahit nandito sa pinakababa at 5,000 meters deep, that point is still carrying the weight being produced by this 3 meter deep soil profile. Tama? So, ang kinikerry lang is yung 3 meter deep. That is the only presence. That is the only thickness of the soil one. So, yan lang consider natin na depth here. And this is very, this is similar to 17.28. Okay? Now, this is due to the effects of soil 1. Ang dami natin kinoconsider. We are done with the effects of surcharge. We're done with gamma 1. How about now we consider the effects of the second soil layer or that is now due to gamma sat. Okay? Or the saturated soil layer. Now, at the saturated soil layer, if you were to consider at the 0 meter depth, wala naman yung soil natin dun. So, we are not con there is no effect whatsoever. Immediately before the 3 meter depth, is there any presence of this saturated soil? Wala din. At the 3 meter depth, anywhere above it, so, wala, tayong kin wala pa yung saturated soil anywhere above the 3 meter depth even on the 3 meter depth itself meaning at the 0 meter depth and at the 3 meter depth sigma prime of A is equal to 0 kasi wala namang presence na saturated soil on that part or anywhere above it to produce now stress okay but if we were to fast forward, go deeper, if we were to go to the 7 meter depth, sigma prime of A, again, is we are now considering the second soil layer's effect on the lateral earth pressure. At the 7 meter depth, again, we are, making, we are considering the second soil layer, so we will be making use of the second... <coughs> we will be making use of the second soil's Active earth coefficient, 0 0.32. And from this now, I will be multiplying what? Effective gamma, that is now 20 minus 9.81. And this is now multiplied by the total depth of the saturated soil. In this case, that is now 4 meters. Okay? So, sigma prime of A due to the saturated soil at the 7 meter depth is equal to... Nico compito kaya matagal class. Four three. Okay. KPA. So is that it class? Are those everything that contributes to our lateral earth pressure? Yun lang balat na nagbibigay ng stress sa wall? No. Ano pa yung ko consider? We consider now the presence of the water because that is also pushing against our wall. So due now to the effects of gamma W or the unit weight of water, at the 7 meter depth, mu or that is now the effects of water, the pressure of water is simply equal now to unit weight 9.81 multiplied by the total height of the, of the water. And that is now 4. And this is equal to... Thirty-nine point twenty-four kPa. 
Grabe na nga kamis ka yung students. Gusto ko nakikita kayo tas pinagsasabihan ko sino yung maingay ganun. Tas magpapakalkyo ako sa inyo pag tinatamad ako mag-type sa calculator. Nakakamis kayo, no? I miss you my students. I hope you are all safe. So now we have all the values of our lateral earth pressure at any given point or at the point of interest. Given these values, we can go ahead and draw our pressure diagram. Firstly, let's consider due to the effects of surcharge. What is the pressure diagram there? At the 0 meter depth, we have 20.3 kPa. Immediately before 3 meters, we have 20.3 kPa. After the 3 meters, we have 16 kPa. And at 7 meters, we have 16 kPa. So if I were to draw the pressure diagram, it would look something like this. Right? At the 0 meter depth, we have 20.3. 20.3. Then it immediately after the 3 meter depth, we will go down to a value of 16 kPa and 16 kPa. Now considering the effects of our first soil layer that is now gamma 1 banking yung ano sir due to the effects of gamma 1 now at the 0 meter depth we have 0 kPa immediately before the 3 meter depth we have 21.924 so from that 0 meter ay from that 0 kPa there's a linear increase Going up to 21.924, okay? And now, immediately after the 3 meter depth, saan yun? Immediately after 3 meter depth, there is now a reduction. Now, this is the overburden pressure, the second soil carrying the first soil layer. But there is now a decrease on it because of the difference in active earth coefficient induced by the difference of angle of frictions. So, bumaba siya dito up until a value of 17.28 kPa. Okay? And from that, up until the 7 meter depth, it is still 17.28. So, constant na yung binubuhat ng soil underneath. This is the overburden pressure. 17.28. Now, this is the pressure diagram due to surcharge and due to gamma 1, the first soil layer. How about due to saturated soil? O, di ba? Dali nyo rin babalikan itong mga in-erase ko. Simply rewind the video. Basic. Okay? Now, if I were to consider now the effects due to Gamma saturated or the saturated soil. Now, at the 0 meter depth, there is no effect of it. Wala yan. 0 dahil dito. Up until the 3 meter depth, it is still 0. But starting from the 3 meter depth, up until the 7 meter depth, there is again a linear increase. And this value is equal to 13.043. Diba? And lastly, we consider the effects of the water. So, due to gamma W, it has a similar pressure diagram. At the 0 meter depth, it is 0. At the 3 meter depth, again, it is still 0. But starting from the 3 meter depth, there is now an increase, a linear increase of 9.81 per unit meter or meter length of the wall. Now, from this point, this value is reached, uh, has reached 39.24 kPa. So, I have all my pressure diagrams now. How do I solve for the total earth force? Hey, wait, what is being asked of us? We are being asked for... Determine the total lateral pressure at the base of the wall. So, how do I solve for the total lateral earth pressure?
If we now consider the total lateral earth pressure, let's just say that is sigma prime A at the base. I simply add, okay? I simply add the, the values at the base of the wall. Uh, here, I would have 16 plus 17.28 plus 13.043. And lastly, plus 39.24. Kailangan ko i-rug itong side na to na tatanggal. Okay. 39.24. So, the total value is... kPa. Okay. Next up, I need to solve for the total active force. Total active force, of course, being the area or the summation of the area, the areas of the pressure diagram. So, how many areas do I have here? I actually have four area di pre four pressure diagrams. But as you can see, these are irregular shapes. And we don't have a direct formula for the areas of these shapes here. I could simply divide these irregular shapes. Kapag ito hinati ko siya dito, I will now be given two rectangles. Rectangle 1, rectangle 2. If I were to cut it here, I would be given a triangle and a rectangle. Here, I am given a triangle and I am given a triangle. I can solve for all these areas and add them up. I would have my total lateral or total active force. Okay? So, let's say this is my area 1. This is my area 2. This is my area 3. This is my area 4. Area 5. And area 6. Let's go ahead and compute for area 1. It is 20.3 times a height of 3. Area 1 is 60.9. Plus area 2, 16 times 4. Area 2 is 64. Area 3 is a triangle. So, 21.924 times 3 divided by 2. That is now 32.886. Plus 17.28 rectangle times 4. 69.12. 12. Plus this triangle here, that is now 13.043, area 5, times 4 divided by 2, 26.086. And the area last here is 39.24 times 4 divided by 2. That is now 78.48. Okay, so those are the total areas. I simply have to add them up to get my total active force. This is now 60.9 plus 64 plus 32.886 plus 69.12 plus 26.086 plus 78.48. Total value is now equal to 331.472 kilonewtons now per meter length of the wall so that is the answer this is again the answer so the next requirement now what is the total active moment acting on the wall how do i get that i simply take the individual areas and multiply them with a moment arm up until the base of the wall so the first area 60.9 Ano yung centroid ng first area ko? That is that rectangle there. To get the centroid of a rectangle, that is simply half of it. So, at this point here, nandyan yung force. And that distance now from the base of the wall is simply 4 meters plus half of the 3 meters. That is simply 5.5 meters. Next up, I consider the second area, 64. Second area is this rectangle here. To get, for, to get the moment arm, that is simply 4 meters divided by 2, or that is now 2 meters. Okay? Sana hindi matanggal tong formica. Next up, area 3. Area 3 has 
a value of 32.886. Eight eight six. What is the moment arm of area three? Again, this is a triangle, so the centroid is one third of the total height. One third of three is equal to one plus the four meters here. That is simply five. Okay. Next up, we have area four. Area four now is a rectangle, so that is sixty nine point twelve multiplied by the moment arm. That is 4 divided by 2, or which is simply 2. Next up, we have area 5, plus now 26.086. Ano yung centroid niya? This is a triangle. What is the distance from the base of the centroid? From the centroid, that is simply one third of the total height. Total height is 4 meters, so we take one third, four thirds. And lastly, area 6 now is 78. 0.48 multiplied by again similar silang dalawa that is ang uh, 4 thirds so the total active moment on the wall is equal to 905.041 Okay, this is now in kilonewtons per meter But again, this is per meter length of the wall So, in yung value So, we have no moment And we have the force And we have the total lateral pressure at the base of the wall Now, I have a question Paano kung tinanong yung location ng force natin? How do we solve for that? Location of the force, that is now Y bar, is simply equal to moment divided by force every time. So that is now 905.041 divided by 331.472. The location from the base is 2.73 meters. Answer. Boom. Questions? If you don't have questions, I think we could end here. Now, with regards to this, there is still another problem there. We have problem 3. Problem 3, please try to solve on your own. I will be giving you the answers at a later time. Kasi ano na, ano oras na ba? Oras na. Alas stress na lang madaling araw. Okay. So, call center duty again. So, that is that. So, for problem 3, I would like you to try and solve for it. What is the main difference for problem 3? Problem 3, meron namang tubig dito. Nagkaroon lang ng tubig. Anong effect ng tubig? Tubig there, or water there, magkakaroon lang tayo ng additional area diagram, or area pressure diagram, but this time it is on the other side. So, since it is on the other side, we subtract it now from the total value we get here. Okay? Similarly, kapag moment, papunta dito yung force niya, susubtract din natin yung moment. Okay? So, that's that. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in our Google Classroom. Uh, let's try to limit the interactions in Facebook. Kasi hindi ko nakikita minsan. You could send me an email. I have given you my email address. Hopefully, this is the start. I'll be uploading constantly para mabut natin at matapos natin yung retaining walls for supposedly midterms. Okay? That's that. Ciao!